everyone. Welcome into My Chamber TV, the heartbeat of our community. It's great to have you with us. Normally, every week we interview various chamber members, board members, business owners, and we also have members in the community that come in to talk about their charities. Well, today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about our brand new show, BizMix TV, and I'm very honored to interview of our panelists. I want to sort of set this up and let you know what BizMix TV is all about. It's all about getting the message out to the community on the latest, greatest, up-to-the-minute tips on business strategies that work. I mean, that really work for small business owners. Do you own a business or is your business owning you? It's kind of like a little tagline that I use because so many people need to know what the benefits are of being up on social media, being up on websites. Being a business owner and the legalities that go along with it. What about finance? How would you like to have more money in your pocket or your bank account? And not only that, one of the biggest things that has always been my mystery is marketing. So we brought this show together and we're dedicating our My Chamber TV show to actually interviewing four of our panelists. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce two of our gentlemen who we are honored to have. In fact, we have Dave Taylor. You are in finance. We have Sid Hassan, and you are in the marketing arena. So I can't say how grateful we are to have you guys joining us. So welcome to My Chamber TV Thank today. You. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, we have so many plans for this show, and I think the timing is now. Do you guys agree that business is not as usual as it once was? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's totally different. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the world has changed in the way that small businesses and enterprise class customers, Barbara, are thinking about to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. The world of innovation is back. Innovation, stepping out of the box. Yeah, and, and I think oftentimes what we've done for the last 15, 20 years is focused on invention. I think in innovation is back in a very cool way. I love I, the way you're saying that yeah. because we've been doing the show for a couple of years now. And the one thing that I notice with every single chamber member, they're <coughs> all saying the same thing. And being able to step out of the box and yeah. do things different, be innovative, be creative. And what comes along with that, obviously, is finance. We, we need to have our, our finances in order. And if we don't, we may make some of those dreaded mistakes that really we end up paying for later on. What's your take on that, Dave? Now, you've been in the finance industry for a, for long, a time. long time. I've worked for Fortune 100, 500, 100 companies, 500 companies, micro companies, and my own company. And, and really, it's really just the size of the zeros that go behind the number. Every, all the principles basically stay the same. The, the, the thing that's really shifted is when you talk about in, invention versus innovation and things like that, we're in a... Uh, an area right now, we're in a period of time that's never been around before. It's always been brick and mortar, sit at the desk. Even when computers came along, you were still sitting at the mm -hmm. desk. So you were going from a handwritten spreadsheet to a spreadsheet on a computer. <coughs> but what's really changed now is mobility. Mm -hmm. Everything is going totally opposite. For the first time in history, people can run their entire business from their cell phone from outer space if they had a strong enough internet connection. It's crazy. So everybody, when you're thinking about starting a small business, everything from the small pizza, from the pizza shop, all the way up to the technology company has to really think about how mobility is gonna affect their business. And you know, that is a really very valid point. And I was wondering that too, it seems like everything's flipped. That's right. And, and you're so right. We, we were sitting at a desk. We're still sitting at a desk. But really, our desk goes with us with our cell phone, with That's our right. iPad. It's all right there. And I've heard, in fact, our, our marketer with Tampa Bay Multimedia has said, this phone is the most <coughs> valuable piece of real estate you could ever own. I mean, I was using it yesterday, last night, to show our video clips on what yeah. we do here at yeah. Tampa Bay Multimedia. So from your... Sp you want to say something? Go right ahead. after you, Barbara. Sorry, I was just formulating a thought for you. Oh, okay. Well, we'll let you formulate that thought. I know it's going to be <laughs> magical. <laughs> but what you're saying about things changing, what, what, give us some more little samples and snippets of what you've seen in the financial industry, just a couple of tips, because this is the kind of thing that you're yeah. going to be hearing on our BizMix well, TV show. Well, when you, when you think about keeping track of, of money and keeping track of what you're doing, um, really it's a very dynamic thing, and, and you have to really... I mean, accounting is one thing. Accounting is counting all the, all the beans, okay? From a very basic point of view, accounting tells you, you know, what do I have, 
okay, finance looks at the numbers and says what direction we're going in. So like a <coughs> GPS, basically, if you will. Right. And, and what's really changed is people can now get information much faster than they ever could before. So for example, if we jump over to marketing for a second, one thing that's really big is return on investment. So you'll hear the terms ROI, I made a profit, um, that, that marketing campaign, I, in a very simple terms, brought in more money than it cost me. All that goes back to return on investment. You can get return on investment numbers in real time now. When in the past, you used to have to wait till the end of a marketing campaign, wait to see how many people came in, total up the numbers. If you're on the web or something like that right now and you're doing a, a Google campaign or you're doing any kind of a, a campaign online, you can get real live minute by minute results of what's happening. And what the advantage of that is, is you can make course corrections <coughs> as you're going through the campaign instead of waiting till the end of the campaign. I'm sure you've seen things like that. Absolutely. I was going to make a joke and say, when you said mobility, I thought you meant two feet, but now I fully yeah. understand <laughs> what you meant. No, I think uh, you bring up a valid point, and I hope our viewers understand fundamentally there's some tenets that have changed in the sense that in the olden days, enterprise class customers or corporations thought, we'll build it and they shall come. What's fundamentally changed now is us. We are at the forefront of writing the user requirements. So the concept of uh, one of our other esteemed guests, Laura, will tell you about social media is that the UI UX is foremost in front and center. Steve Jobs fundamentally said one cool thing, which was start with the user experience and work your way back to technology. That is a fundamental mind shift. Mm -hmm. So I hope our users who are at home for one hour will uh, decrease their amount of Google searches and kind of hear some of the things we've picked up to save them the pitfalls. And then going back to the mobility thought, not the two feet, but a mobile device, um, it is said by the end of 2015 that 39% of all transactions will be done natively on a mobile device yeah, worldwide. No kidding. Think about that. Four out of 10 transactions that we do in our everyday lives will natively be done on a mobile device. That's, That's right. amazing. Think Who about would have ever where thought? we've come and from and where we are. Exactly. And when you think about that, when you think, think about Amazon, <clears throat> think about Walmart. Okay, I was out on the web the other day and I was looking at something on Amazon. Well, Walmart has their own online presence. These companies are spending millions of dollars building this online presence and they're all being but we're all being mobile optimized. Right. They want you to be able to go, whoop, I like this, boom, I ordered it, now it's being delivered. Yeah. That's the future. And, and, and I hope with every story that we kind of portray and kind of help delineate as use cases, our, our, our users get one fundamental thing out of it. The takeaway is that there's a lesson to be learned. Yes. If we're able to now purchase plumbing or the infrastructure you need to start your business, whether it's the Jiffy Lube on the corner down here or you're selling lemonade. Think about the difference in way things are done now. You can buy public cloud services or infrastructure or in the layman's terms, plumbing to run your business in the matter of seconds right. from Amazon. That is it's crazy. It's a beautiful thing. So it I is hope, a beautiful yeah, thing. So I hope our, our viewers realize that you said something very fundamentally important to me, which was throttle. If you have a business plan in play now, think about the things that we ho we offer you that we that we didn't have someone else offer us that we've kind of kind of uh, you know collected and put together for you that will help you throttle and say you know what I was thinking something, but Dave said something that's really interesting and maybe I should throttle. Exactly. That's important. Exactly. Well, and with you guys being experts and really testing so many things out as the expert in your own field, you're really saving our viewers a lot of time, a lot of money a lot of effort and, and really <coughs> minimizing their frustration in trying to create or advance their own business. Because I know for myself and my husband as a small business owner, my goodness, I mean, I'm a baby boomer. How many baby boomers are out there? <laughs> but, you know, texting, um, hashtag, I'm, I'm going, why is all this, you know, stuff? And then here it comes about. So I'm, t I'm getting with the program with it, and I'm still, and, and you know, learning. You, you yeah. have to know when you know something and when you don't know something. And one of the biggest mistakes from a financial point of view, it's a financial-related point of view, that I see happening is a business owner, especially a small business or a micro-business owner, will try and do everything themselves and not outsource anything. And what happens is you become a jack-of-all-trades and an expert at none. So... You know, you think, oh, this, for example, I use social media for something, uh, for an example. And, you know, you, you say, okay, I have a Facebook account. I have a Twitter account. So I can go out and do this. Okay. 
what you find is you, you end up, okay, do I, do I sit there and do I play with Facebook and Twitter and try and get everything done, or do I do what my business is actually there yeah, for to do? Absolutely. And, and sometimes they become penny wise and pound foolish because they're much better off hiring somebody to do that. Oh, thank and you. And biting the but bullet to do that <laughs> and have <laughs> them focus on I think I realize where the heroin now. <laughs> I, think, I think it's all coming together. But no, I think you make a really good point. And I hope our viewers kind of glean that. You can't be all things to all people. I learned this from a wise man. I learned that. Right? In the sense that if you're coming up with a business plan that is brick and mortar or web-based or just HTTP-based, think about your, your target audience. Start with them and work your way back to the solution. That's right. right. Start with how they are going to, going to interact with your service offering or procure or transact with your, your, your goods and work yourself back. Which is exactly flipped from what it from used to be. how it used to be. We'll build it, we'll build, build it, and they shall come. And hope that they come. The, well, the big corporations would come out with a service or a product and say, this is the way it is. Take right. it or leave it. Right. It was like Ford. You can have any, when they first started off, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. <laughs> you know, that's how Ford started. They were all yeah. black cars. Right. Yeah. Then the users, the buyers, wanted different colors. So it forced <clears> change. <throat> but the, 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 the time, the speed of change <clears throat> was tremendously long back then. The speed of change now is light speed. Right. Oh, it is light speed. And first speed. to market, and first to market first to is market very is important. Everything. So whatever your product or service offering is, know that if you come up with some innovative idea, getting to the market kind of solidifies your position because it's much easier to lead the pack than it is to follow very and catch good, up. Very, right. very good point. Very and true. on that very note, good point. we're going to take a quick little time out. When we come back, maybe I can squeeze a few innovative tips from our gentleman guests today. We'll be right back after these messages. This is one bee that loves going to the dentist because it's made for you and me. My name is Dr. Bezerra from New Tampa Pediatric Dental, providing a comfortable atmosphere in early dental care. Gives kids a great start for healthy teeth and gums for life. When I go to Dr. B, they don't do anything to hurt you. I used to be afraid, but I'm not now. I'm not afraid of the dentist anymore. I love to see Dr. B. Call New Tampa Pediatric Dental today. Everyone's story is different, so why be limited to just one or two options? With Norcom's Norflex Home Loan, you're given the flexibility to tell your story. Pick your terms from 8 to 30 years, all while maintaining a low, fixed mortgage rate. You can pay off your loan more quickly or choose a term based on your budget and timeline. Whatever you do with the Norflex Home Loan, make it part of your financial plan. Norflex. Short term, long term, your terms. Apply online at norcommortgage.com. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. Ever need a doctor after hours? Well, searching won't help. But what do you do? You could go to the urgent care or ER, but if only there was a better way. Introducing the MNO Plus Card. No waiting rooms, no copay, no consultation fee. Giving you 24 seven access to a doctor by phone or online. It's easy to get started with affordable plans starting at $15 a month for a family of five. For more information, visit MNOplus.com today.
Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV. It is the heartbeat of our community. And normally we are interviewing our board members from around town and so much more. But this day has been dedicated because we're talking about businesses and we really want to make a difference in your life. If you have a business or you know anyone that has a small business, we want to give you the best tips, the current cutting edge of what's happening in social media, on websites, and business law. Not only that, what about marketing? Do you know everything there is to know about marketing? And how about finance? We all want to have as many pennies in our pocket as we possibly can. So stick with us. We have two of our gentlemen that is going to be on the panelist of five for Biz Mix TV that's launching next month. It's going to be a great show. We're definitely going to have the cutting edge business tips, strategies to make your business successful. So with us today, we have finance and marketing. We have Dave Taylor on finance. We have Sid Hassan with uh, What's the name of your company that Tech you're Bank. with? Tech Bank. Yes. So you bring a lot to the table when it comes to marketing. Dave brings a lot on <clears throat> finance. So these gentlemen are the business experts for marketing and business. And I tell you, just in a very short segment today, we've already learned a, not, learned a, a tremendous a lot. Wouldn't you agree? Now in this segment, I'm going to see what kind of business tips as far as marketing that you can share and finance tips and then when we launch our show in October we're gonna take it from here to there and you're gonna learn all kinds of goodies so who would like to go first what uh, if, sure. if you had to give three marketing tips in your experience and you've been in the marketing industry for how long <clears throat> um, marketing in a sense by way of technology but I would say you know professionally speaking for 10 years with a career that's a little bit longer Barbara very good, very good. So you know what you're talking about with what works, what doesn't work, but you're still staying on the cutting edge, right? Hey, if you throw enough spaghetti, some will stick. <laughs> so what's sticking today? Yeah, so I think there's some, there's some use cases that we can talk about for our viewers in the sense that if you look at the conversation that has shifted to us, the user, the consumers of goods and services, there is a fundamental difference between user experience and design. So when you, our viewers, are coming up with your business plans or you're ready to sign a lease on a, on a, on a, on a brick and mortar uh, retail setup, think about the difference between design and user experience. So think about the person that's going to walk in your doors or connect to you from a HTTPS.com uh, URL. And think about the user experience they're going to have versus the design. If the design is, from an urban planning standpoint, a road that goes one mile down and makes a left, but the user experience is one that someone says, hey, I can just cut across this field and get to point B from point A. There's something, there's some validity there. So that's one use case. Then I thought I'd maybe share what fundamentally Uber has done for the world. It's a pretty simple thing in the sense that if you, if you look at their business plan, it's remarkably simple. Yes, simple. They fundamentally said that we can kill the notion of the intermediary or the broker, or in layman's terms, when Dave needs to go from point A to point B, he no longer needs to call dispatch and say, hey, I'm at point A, I need to go to point B, send me a car. Because fundamentally, our phones, which is in my pocket, has a Mac ID. It knows exactly where you are 24-7. Uh, so what Uber is saying is that you can transact directly with the merchant. So they did something very simple. They innovated the fact that you no longer need an intermediary between the person that needs to acquire goods and the person selling that or the merchant. But they did it in a really sexy way, Barbara. Their UI, UX, or their mobile app on the iStore or the App Store is very sexy, ultra modern, ultra slick. It's beautiful. And so if someone needs transportation, yeah. it's like right there. Absolutely. And it's easy Intri to use. Intrinsically, your mobile device, which statistically, and I'm a stats guy, I'm a tech guy, and marketing guy, so statistically they say there was a poll done in which 80% of the people polled, Barbara, you ready for this? Said that their mobile device is less than 24 inches away from them 24 hours a day. The viewers, I mean, I think you need to comprehend this. 24 inches or less, 24 hours away from you. So if you're a mobile retailer selling mm. uh, chenille throws and you just want to use the web, think about that. Yeah. yeah. It is incredible. You know, it's interesting that you say that because my mobile, de it's like, it's like it has to be close by in case I have this, some kind of an idea. So whether I want to shop I, or Google exactly. something. No, Barbara, that, you're spot on. But again, I want to take a step back and say the 
premise of what I'm saying is, I fundamentally believe marketing will always be in the traditional realm. It'll be about you having a great experience, Barbara, at the shop down the street or at the Baskin Robbins. Of course. Well, and that's you what telling makes me, success. Sid, I just had the best service yes. and an in, in incredible rocky road. So think about that, viewers. No matter what you do or if you employ a social marketing, SEO, SEM company, that's one thing. But think about the traditional aspect. That will never go away. No, it won't. Success is success in business. Yeah. Either they like the product, the service, the business, or they don't. On my last flight home, Barbara, I'll end with this. And sorry, I'm being, no, uh, I'm okay. cannibalizing our oh, time. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> You're fine. On my last flight home, I read something brilliant in the Southwestern Southwest magazine. You know, in the back of your in the front seat, you've got the magazine. Yes. The fr front page of the cover is usually a note from the CEO. The CEO of Southwest Airlines said something beautiful, and it's simple. And it was this. We are a customer service company. We just happen to fly planes. Yeah, it was a beauty. Yeah. But think about that, viewers. Yeah. That is so compelling. Yes, and to a customer. Yes. To hear that, that's music to our ears. And CEO of a massive company. Yeah. We are a customer service company. But that never used to be like that. we happen to fly planes. Yeah. That's very different. It was different. always the other way around. It was always the other way around. Sorry, we fly I digress. Airplanes. We, it was always, we fly airplanes, and if you'd like to get on our airplane, you go when, you, when we want to fly, how we want to fly, you get what we give you. Now the whole thing has flipped around. It's flipped, and that's what we were talking about just before the break. That's right. And so how does finance fit in with that whole, that well, whole concept? Fi you know, with the whole mobility thing, you can really keep your bank and your numbers with you all the time. You can run marketing campaigns where you see the results in real time right on your phone. Um, simple things the audience can do, for example, to protect themselves, because I'm all about protection, is number one, if you have a debit card or a credit card from a major bank that will do what they call pushes to you, so if somebody uses, or even if you use your credit card or your debit card, it pushes a notification to you that you use that card. Now this is okay. news to me. So I, I, just the terminology, it, okay? That's how things change. But push means basically it's coming from someone to uh -huh, you. Uh -huh. So you go out and you buy a two dollar slice of pizza, okay? They charge your card for two dollars. You immediately get a text message that tells me somebody used your card. That tells you somebody used your card. So you can stay At on at the that. same time. That's going into your accounting system. You should have a, an accounting system that comes up on your phone that says, oh, I bought a slice of pizza today. I put that off into business meals. Yep. So you can do on the fly accounting. Oh, so on you demand. can stay like on demand. Demand. On demand, with yeah. all. That's right. And Very what good. that does for you. Mm -hmm. So that's great. That now attract all that. But what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I love when people pull out their income statement or their balance sheet and say, yes, I, I have one of those. I'm like, I'm okay. What, what does it mean to you? you know, have, you ever, have you ever opened up and taken a look at the numbers and say, what are they trying to tell me? If you look at one month, they don't tell you anything. But if you look over a few months, they can tell you a trend of where you're going. You should always be looking 90 days back and look at the direction of things. You can spot expense trends that are going wrong. You can spot income trends that are going wrong. You can, tra you can track things like, okay, I got 1,400 hits to my website last month and sold 200 items. Don't care what the 200 items are, but I sold 200 widgets, okay? This month, I got 1,800 hits to my website and sold 150 wedg widgets, okay? I liked it better when I had the 1,400 exactly. and sold 200. Well, something happened, so what changed? And you can see in real time how many people hit your web page and who dropped off and things like that. Now, I know that's getting a little bit complicated for people because the normal person who owns the pizza shop or something like that doesn't really want to be bothered sitting there. But that goes back to my first point that you can't be an expert in everything you do. Right. So you need to have somebody like a Sid or Laura, who you'll meet in the next segment, looking at it for you, telling you, hey, Dave, um, something's wrong and here's what it is. Dave, I've, Dave, I've got to tell you, Sid and expert are oxymoronic to begin yeah. with. But anyhow, um, I was going to say, for, the, for, the aver for, for, for our viewers that are in the brick and mortar model, because a lot of the finance stuff goes way over my head, and I've got very tall hair. So um, <laughs> tell me in layman's terms about, give me a use case for the average viewer out there. Sorry, not the average. By no means are, are we average. We're all you know, ordinary people doing extraordinary things. But give us a use case around the person that is just starting out. Cash reserves. How much money do you need to have on hand? Liquidity. And, well, I mean, a lot in of simple, it, simple terms for the person sure. that is a SMB, small business 
small medium business owner that has four Jiffy Loops. Well, and if you can do that in two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah. Well, the person, I mean, there's different business models. The, the micro business, like the pizza parlor or something like that, the lemonade stand, that's one set of circumstances. When you go up to a Jiffy Lube or a franchise or something like that, that's a different set of circumstances because many times that's dictated by the franchise holder, how much cash reserves you need to have and things like that. Um, but generally, what I like to see is I like to see at least 60 days of revenue set up in the bank, you know, sitting there. Uh, not necessarily profits, but 60 days of revenue. So if you're generally, if you're bringing in about $10,000 a month in revenue, I like to see, you know, $20,000 of cash reserves sitting in the bank. Now, that doesn't mean you're failing if not, if you don't have that. And the reason is because when you're first starting out, you have to start to build a momentum. You're investing, you know, your time. I mean, people always think about when they start a small business or any business, the investment that they have to make into it. And people talk about investment in terms of money, right? All of you, as I'm sure, when I say investment, they all think intuitively money. That is actually some of the smallest investment that you'll have. The investment is in your time, in, in, in your intellectual capital, your thought process. I mean, if you're working 20 hours a day in your business and sleeping four, what other quality of life do you have? So you have to think about, you know, what reserves do you have? I reserve time for myself. I reserve money, things like that. Um, yeah. You also allocate things differently when you're starting a business. You might allocate a lot of revenue that's coming in to marketing expenses mm -hmm. to get more in. You're really not worried about making a profit. You're worried about fueling up the engine, getting right. the ball running. Yeah. It's kind of like a picture, a big gigantic rock, a big rock, and you're starting to push the rock. Well, the effort to push the rock in the beginning is huge, mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. huge. But once that rock starts rolling, keeping it going takes exponentially less effort to do. Do you have a calculator on you now? Yeah, no, I don't, but it's in my phone. <laughs> I'm one of those people, tw two feet away from my phone? How about like 12 inches yeah. away from my phone? I can do simple math, Maybe Dave, even that's three it. Simple inches math, away from plus, my phone. minus, But yeah, I'm, I'm psychotically attached to my phone. <laughs> well, you know, this is all good, and we have a break, and I, I, I just want to thank both of you. I think already you viewers will agree that you've already gleaned a lot of really good information. This is just a taste of what BizMix TV is going to be about. So you'll want to tune in. Now stick around because in our next segment, we also have another great segment with Laura Shipman. And let me tell you, she is our rock star social media maven. And I've already attended some of her events. I'll second that. And they yes. are <laughs> absolutely solid. I want to thank you guys so much. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, and thank you very much. we'll see you back you, again. <laughs> good job. Stay with us. This is one bee that loves going to the dentist because it's made for you and me. My name is Dr. Bezerra from New Tampa Pediatric Dental. Providing a comfortable atmosphere in early dental care gives kids a great start for healthy teeth and gums for life. When I go to Dr. B, they don't do anything to hurt you. I used to be afraid, but I'm not now. I'm not afraid of the dentist anymore. I love to see Dr. B. Call New Tampa Pediatric Dental today. Everyone's story is different, so why be limited to just one or two options? With Norcom's Norflex Home Loan, you're given the flexibility to tell your story. Pick your terms from 8 to 30 years, all while maintaining a low, fixed mortgage rate. You can pay off your loan more quickly or choose a term based on your budget and timeline. Whatever you do with the Norflex Home Loan, make it part of your financial plan. Norflex. Short term. Long term. Your terms. Apply online at NorcomMortgage.com. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. Ever need a doctor after hours? Well, searching won't help, but what do you do? You could go to the urgent care or ER, but if only there was a better way. Introducing the MNO Plus Card. 
No waiting rooms, no copay, no consultation fee. Giving you 24 7 access to a doctor by phone or online. It's easy to get started with affordable plans starting at $15 a month for a family of five. For more information, visit mnoplus.com today. Hi, everyone. Welcome back into My Chamber TV. I am your host, Barbara Marville Kelly. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a special segment again. This is really about our new show being featured by Tampa Bay Multimedia. That's where we produce our shows. We're going to be launching Biz Mix TV, and we have a panel of five experts that's going to bring you successful business strategies in improving your business. In this segment, we have, and I always love to say this because I'm so passionate after attending Laura's event, Laura Shipman, who actually is what I consider the rock star social media maven. And let me tell you, she does rock this community with all of her periscoping and social media tips. You're going to love the tips that you hear from her. Then we have 
Russell Taylor, who is also our website designer guru that's going to give you just about anything and everything you need to know about putting up a proper website. And I would guess just these two alone, and then add our finance guy, our marketing guy, and then of course we have a lawyer from Gully Law, Reese Gully, and you'll be seeing her next month as we launch the show. So I think we've got the best of all worlds, don't we guys? I think so. Definitely, definitely. Power team. There, sure. it, is, it is the power team, absolutely. So I'm going to start with you, Laura, sure. since I have been like attached <laughs> to your hip in the last week or so, going around to different networking events. And what, what I want to hear from you, which is what you had mentioned the other day when we were playing BizMix TV here in the studio, is where you started from. What what caused you to get involved with social media, which is is a true story, and I think everybody has a story. We love to hear stories on how we get started in doing things. You know, Barbara, that's an excellent question because one of the parts about social media is really being authentic and being your true self. Mm -hmm. You never want to come across as a phony. And um, my story is not a happy story. I had gotten very sick um, about ten years ago and was in bed for a very long time about two years and was not able to get out in the community. Although I was able to work and do some business consulting and things like that, but then that's when social media kind of came on fire. And I was able to connect with my customers, with my clients and things like that through social media. And just getting any message I needed to out there and gathering information at the same time. So although I wasn't out in the community and, and working and driving around and all that good stuff, I was still earning an education through social media and through the internet, and it's a powerful tool if you leverage it and use it correctly. And so that's the key is leveraging it and knowing how and when to use it so you're not wasting time and getting you know stuck on Facebook like all day long. But that is a very, very good point. Is I try to pace myself on Facebook, but there, I have to admit, sometimes I'll... I'll start out with, you know, posting for business and then I end up playing and before I know it, an hour and a half's gone by. So I can use some tips on that. And on just how to how to manage your time yeah. effectively. I mean yeah. that's the thing. With social media, just like anything that you do in life, you should really have a plan about how you're gonna attack it and, mm -hmm. and what it is you're trying to get get from it. And when you're going to post on social media, you just don't want to be haphazardly posting. And there is a certain way that you schedule, you should actually, let me back up, you should have an editorial plan where you have a calendar set out on what you're going to do on social media and stick to that calendar. Otherwise, it will become that time cow. It'll become that major distraction. And a lot of it is also stick stick to itiveness of yourself being very disciplined in what you're doing on social media. Yes. There's a time for business social media and there's a time for play. personal play social <laughs> media. Absolutely. And you just have to be an adult about it yeah. and, and buck up and just say, it. look, it, I'm here to do business and that's what I'm going to do during this next 15 minutes. And yes. then later I can do the personal stuff. That's a, that's a very, very good tip. I'm going to bounce over to uh, Rusty because I know when it comes to websites, I like to think I have some creativity, but honestly, being an artist, I, nobody really knows that, but it, when it comes to websites, I don't have a clue. What can you give our viewers today as some tips to really engage them to come and watch our shows? What can you share? Some of the pitfalls, some of the mistakes we make trying to put up our own websites. We were talking earlier on, um, the guys were saying, you know what? Just Bite the bullet, step up to the plate, and hire an expert like yourself. Why? Definitely. Um, a lot of times, uh, what people don't understand nowadays is what what needs to be in the website, um, the content that needs there, um, the the images that go there, and stuff like that, and then the structure, the silo structures of the website. Um, with everything that's going on with like Google and Bing and all the big search engines and all these big updates with mobile and everything, um, you really have to stay on top of those things to understand how the structure needs to be done, how to um, put your call of actions in. Um, and that's what, when you're working with professionals, we have the tools in the background and we, we get education um, on how to keep those things going and keeping it fluent. Um, at the end of the day, I'm a big believer in that, that the content needs to come from the business owner because they're the expert in mm -hmm. their industry. Mm -hmm. But we can help them scope that so that it, the message makes sense to the, to the masses and that that message has a call to action. Um, so many times we see that everybody wants to 
just explode with with information on their websites and and you never get to the point of having a call to action um you know and not giving them a, a reason to relate with you yes. or to want to do a transaction with you so um using an, an experienced expert that understands both the the structural side of what needs to be there but also how to do, lay out the content it's like with social media mm -hmm. you i mean we we kind of bleed into each yes, other because you do. You do. We, we we have to work very very closely together mm -hmm. because the message that i'm putting out has got to relate to the message that she's putting out sure so it's it's a it's a big part of understanding I'm a, I, I love the fact that you brought up having a calendar for that. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing with your website, with your blog post <laughs> and everything like that because that's where that message is. You need to know when certain things are going out and you need to know when you're going to change content on your website and on certain pages to effectively get that message to keep your, um, your ROI or your return um, coming in so that people are hitting you there. Very good point. Just to echo what he was saying, you know, People, it's amazing when I say to people, let's put a plan together for your social media. And they look at me like, well, doesn't that kind of just happen on the fly? And then I say to people, no, there's a definite seasonality, seasonality to your business of what happens in the fall versus the spring versus the summer. Oh, yes. And so we need to capitalize on that. And so I'll sit down with a client and I'll say, look, let's look at an editorial calendar for your business. And let's go through that and let's talk about what you want to see in all of these social media posts. It's not a mm -hmm. haphazard thing. Mm -hmm. It's a science. There's a science behind it. Mm -hmm. And willing to bet you, 9 out of 10 people have never looked at their business that way from a social media standpoint. Absolutely. And it's a huge mess, a huge mess. And I mean, that point alone that you just cleared with us and the same with you, I mean, that's brilliant information. Imagine that kind of that kind of information that you're going to be hearing on BizMix. You're going to get new information all the time. I know we have a commercial break coming up. We're going to go ahead and do that. When we come back, we're going to see much more we can get from you, too, as some business tips, and hopefully you can start putting them into place. So stay with us, and we'll be right back. This is one bee that loves going to the dentist because... It's made for you and me. My name is Dr. Bezerra from New Tampa Pediatric Dental, providing a comfortable atmosphere in early dental care. Gives kids a great start for healthy teeth and gums for life. When I go to Dr. B, they don't do anything to hurt you. I used to be afraid, but I'm not now. I'm not afraid of the dentist anymore. I love to see Dr. B. Call New Tampa Pediatric Dental today. Everyone's story is different, so why be limited to just one or two options? With Norcom's Norflex Home Loan, you're given the flexibility to tell your story. Pick your terms from 8 to 30 years, all while maintaining a low, fixed mortgage rate. You can pay off your loan more quickly or choose a term based on your budget and timeline. Whatever you do with the Norflex Home Loan, make it part of your financial plan. Norflex. Short term. Long term. Your terms. Apply online at NorcomMortgage.com. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Ever need a doctor after hours? Well, searching won't help. But what do you do? You could go to the urgent care or ER, but if only there was a better way. Introducing the MNO Plus Card. No waiting rooms, no copay, no consultation fee. Giving you 24 seven access to a doctor by phone or online. It's easy to get started with affordable plans starting at $15 a month for a family of five. For more information, visit MNOplus.com today.
Hi everyone, welcome back into My Chamber TV. It is the heartbeat of our community. And thank you so much for joining us. I know you're enjoying the show as much as I am. Really getting a lot of these free business tips from the experts. And that's what BizMix TV is all about. And we're featuring it as a special segment on My Chamber TV because My Chamber TV is all about businesses and so many people that are growing their business, starting new businesses, and adding different business strategies to step out of the box because business is not as usual as it once was. With me is Laura Shipman, and we also have Russell Taylor talking about websites and social media two major players in the world of business today, is it not? Oh, uh, for sure. I mean, Definitely. what if what if we don't have a website, then what? Is that professional or then, not professional? Then I pray that you have a strong social media. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a um, Nowadays, I mean, that's your most valuable real estate. You know, it's the screens, you know, for the phones you and bet. the computer screens and stuff like that. So, I mean, if you're not there, you're missing out. You're, you're not getting your message across. Um, or you're not doing it effectively. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you don't have a website, you better have a strong, strong and social media. And vice versa. If you don't so. have social media, you better have a strong website. Now see how they both go hand in hand, and I am such a firm believer in that. If you don't have a website, what about some of the people that, that think that using Facebook is like their website? Is that perceived as professional or unprofessional? Anymore, I would say no, because um, it's, it's a jumping off point. It's a starting point for businesses. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and, and it's it's not a bad or a, a non-effective way in my mind to, to get a feel for the market space. Um, when we're building out websites, I go to clients, um, Facebook, their LinkedIn pages and everything, to get a feel for who's visiting them, oh, who their, okay. their demographics are. Um, you know, and, and that's where we start from a lot of times, you know, besides the analytical part that we do. But yeah, I mean, to me, it's you're got to have a solid foundation. That's that 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 I keep saying. It. It's a real estate piece that is right. so valuable. The go-to piece. The anchor. It yes. is what everything. Is. It, you drive everything to it. So absolutely, you know. because if you look at social media, it's your customer service department. Yes. Seriously. Yes, it is. Um, you know, your website should have all the backup information. That's where you purchase things. If you're an e-commerce site. And the social media part is just that. Everybody forgets that first word being social. That's where you're building relationships and that's where you're dealing with your clientele. So it is important to remember that and to have the website behind you supporting it. So you guys really do engage with one another and need to. I, I know with my website guy, I've had my website out for a lot of years, but it's evolved and changed over the years too. And the best thing that I, I really had him do because I didn't have a clue on it, was to 
be able to post our different events with my husband's uh, seminars and everything on Facebook. Go on to the website mm -hmm. and take that and put it on Facebook mm -hmm. and vice versa mm -hmm. or find us on Facebook. So I just by gosh and by golly all that on my own. <laughs> but to have this kind of information for the business owner out there, I mean, these tips are just, they're critical. They well, the really thing, are. There, there's so many tools out there that you can use as a business owner. So it doesn't have to become so mundane or, or uh, overwhelming for a business owner. Right. I can, you know, we use If This and That, mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. then we use Suite for mm -hmm. our other stuff too, because we can integrate that data. We can take it from what's being put out on social media, we can put right back into the website right. and vice versa. So yes. what's going in our place, we can give to them. So it's always good to have like a social media person that is your expert doing that part yes. and then the web guy that's doing your web your websites and everything have them be able to communicate with each mm -hmm. other Absolutely. have their calendars co sure. um, work Coincide. together because mm -hmm. then they can set up with like if this and that they can set up a pro a plan so that you only have to put it in one spot and then it goes out everywhere wow. so if this then that is like a recipe that that um triggers a reaction or, or a, mm -hmm. how do you want to say it like a, a series of this. events right mm -hmm. if you do this then this will happen oh, as a I result and, that, and people many people might know what if this then that is see that mm -hmm. really makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. then you're you're just it, it's mushrooming and it's getting right. out there over mm -hmm. and over and over so we only have a couple of minutes left and I know the time goes by so, so fast, fast. What can you give? What you can? What can you leave our viewers with until our Bismix show launches next month on October sixth, right here in this studio? What can you share with them, each of you? Laura, go first. The, the best tip ever with but, social media. You know, there's a couple of things I'd say. First of all, be authentic. That is one of the most important things. Is just be authentic. Be who you are. Don't try and you know fake it. The other thing is build relationships. That's what social media is. It's all about build, building relationships and not advertising and selling. And I think people miss that point. Mm -hmm. They want to go for those likes and for the hearts and all of that, and that's great. But what you're really doing is trying to compel them to do something, connect with you, click through to your website, or pick up the phone and make a phone call. That's what social media is. It's not about getting that sale right then and there. Mm -hmm. You're putting the time in to create a relationship with a client who's hopefully going to last a long time with you as a relationship. That's my advice. And that is really, I, I so am with you on that, is being authentic, being yourself, being your real self. After all, people want to do business with those people. They what? No, no like, like, and, and trust. trust. That I learned in the neighborhood and the community as I started venturing out with, you know, networking and all. How about you, Rusty? I would say, you know, from the website standpoint, make sure that, you know, that the structure makes sense. That when you're leading them from one place to another, that it's not like a rabbit trail that's just mm. getting lost. Um, on your front page, your home page, you got to have a call to action. And it needs to be what we call above the fold. And that's where what showed on the screen it's it's that call to action whatever you're doing if you want them to click through call you whatever it is they need to know that right there in the top of the page they shouldn't have to scroll for it or anything so um another thing is if you're not mobile you're not you're not doing business right. um you know you're not being google's penalizing you now for it um they're not hitting it as hard as they said they were by now mm -hmm. but it is coming we're seeing that action happen so um you know, make sure that your websites are mobile, um, mobile friendly, now, when and you going forward. When you say mobile friendly, mm -hmm. and I had to learn that. I don't want to say the hard way, but I just learned that through my web designer. He says, well, I, want, "I want to do a phone app for you." I say, I said, "What's that?" Mm -hmm. I did, but it's a different way to read it on your phone because it's a smaller device. It, I mean, why don't you? Mm -hmm. That's not my experience. <laughs> you explain um, it. So the simplest thing is if you have a WordPress site, it's it's going it's it's going to retro to any screen it's going to rebuild with just a small snippet of code um the thing is like your older websites your html your html1 3s mm -hmm. all those um you know all the old sites they don't have that capability so what happens is if a picture has a certain size let's say you know we use pixels and stuff like that but we'll say two inches by you know four right. inches uh, that can't fit on the screen <laughs> so you got to have a website that's smart enough to say hey this is a cell phone that we're going to, so everything's so, got, to, oh, got to come down, down and down. make sense for it. That's us. magnificent. <laughs> I'm so glad. Now I really understand it. Mm -hmm. I just thought it automatically. If you go look at somebody's site and there's a 
picture on there, it's going to automatically mm -hmm. shrink down, but that's not no. the case. Mm -mm. Aha! No, and that's where, you know, nowadays, I mean, I, we're a big WordPress user. We, mm -hmm. we love that's it because it's, it's, it's so simplistic it at yes. the end of the day for me to hand it off to the business owner and say, here is what you need to change. Whenever you need big changes done, we'll take care of this for you. Awesome. But it's, it's more cost effective, and plus, you're not paying to have it rebuilt to, to work on these screens. You're not paying for a secondary site exactly. with a piece of code that redirects them. It's, the, it's your main site that's going there. And when you say hand off, that's so that your customers, your clients, can actually work on their own websites. Yes. So that they can change you know, content. They can change the content, so the text. Exactly. They can add pictures and everything. Um, if they have galleries on there, if they have an event um, mm -hmm. plugin, they can actually go and add events and everything Perfect. in there too. So Perfect. There's so there's so many things that you can do nowadays yeah. with a website, as far as you know, from e-commerce to booking appointments to. I mean, it's it's crazy what you can yeah. do nowadays with yeah. websites. I well, mean, and it's important to be able to have be able to control your own website too, because heaven forbid if you decide to take a trip right. to the moon, what happens? Mm -hmm. You got to start all over again. That's what happened to us. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I can't believe it's time to close the show already. That's crazy. This is that's great. Crazy. Isn't this great? So you want to tune in to Bizmix TV, and that's you'll be able to find it. Go to webeamtv.com and click onto the show. It's it's Bizmix TV and it's going to be the panel of experts sharing just like the sample that you've seen today. And my goodness, I've learned so much in just this hour on My Chamber TV. So I want to thank you for joining us. BizMix is going to be launching on October 6th, and that's in the afternoon. At, it's 1.30, isn't it? Yep. Yes, 1.30 yes, in the afternoon. And I hope that you will be able to join us. Thanks for joining us on My Chamber TV. Next week, My Chamber TV is going to be all about different events and charities and giving back in the community. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. This is great. It was it was fun. Fun. Thank awesome. You. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Lots, of hearts. Lots of hearts. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I want to know what that's all about. Hashtags. Tune into BizMix. <laughs> <laughs>